Okay, guys, we're on with you. I'm going to be your trainer today. And with this being said, we're going to go ahead and focus on inventory and POS. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So we're going to scroll. We're going to go to hosanalika.com. We're going to go down to the bottom. Scroll all the way down. Store staff. We're going to go ahead and log in. The reason why we're logging in is because we need to be logged in to be able to access uh, the that section of your programming. Let's go ahead and let's click login. And let me go ahead and pull up the files that I sent you separately with your user information and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and type in. Okay, and we should be able to go in. Okay, so as soon as we go into this section, um, right away we're familiar with this because we have our st employee staff on this all day long on the computer at the business. And we see a menu, title of the business, and the person that's logged in. Now, this is the way you also log out. So if you click here, you can log out. Now, it is recommended that you always log out when you're not going to be the person operating the uh, POS system. Why? Because we want to have a record of who's on and when they are and what did they do during that process, right? So let's make sure that we train our staff. Hey, when you're leaving and someone else is going to run the register, you need to log out and the other person needs to log in. For right now, for the purpose of this video and the purpose of what I've done so far, I've I have done two employees um, by uh, naming using a naming scheme. So I have register and register two, and it could be register three, it could be register four, it could be a person's name. Um, that ha that information hasn't been provided to me. So I just made one up. I made a scheme so that way it doesn't matter who the person is. It's just the title that you've given them. If they're going to be registered one or if they're going to be registered two. Okay? Or three or four. Uh, but those would, be, would need to be added. Uh, for the moment, we have one and two. So let's go ahead and continue. So when we're here, we are seeing that we have access to the POS system to be able to make any sales. So just... To run through real quick a uh, sale so let's say that the person that's in front of the cashier wants a Ciroc mango 375 milliliter right we're gonna add it when we add it it comes in this section once it's in this section it's in the processing sale status of the transaction or uh, interaction that you're having with your customer now let's explain these little things here. So this little red, little red X means I can go ahead and click on this X and close this from from status of being an active item on a shopping list to a no longer needed item in the shopping cart, right? And we also get a subtitle, sub um, subtotal, and we get an order total. Uh, the order total is going to differ um, from the sub uh, sub the subtotal if there's any fees and things like that which yeah, is uh, for for this purpose of this video is not applicable to us unless in the future uh, we decide to do something along those lines so for right now it's I'm just explaining it it's, it's not applicable to us when we, we go here we have a fee a shipping a note okay all these buttons here, we're probably never going to use in the store, but we do have them there, okay? Um, then we have this one that this we're going to be using, which is checkout, okay? We also have a void. To void a transaction that has already been created. This transaction has not been created, so it, this is not applicable to the voiding feature, but let's say that you had 
created the sale already. You went through the whole entire process. You hit the checkout button. You got the money for the for the item, and then the customer turns around at the door and says, "Hey, I don't want the item no more. Something came up. I need to use the money for something else. Whatever the case may be." Well, you're gonna go back to this item, and then you're gonna go ahead and hit that void to void the transaction because it existed, but then it was voided for whatever X amount of reasons. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and push forward. I would like to take an item that has zero money on it, so that way we're not using this 3,375 as an example. So let's go ahead and let's pull up Coca-Cola. All right, we got the one liter of Coca-Cola for zero money and zero cents. So guess what? Uh, guess what, admin? You guys are giving away sodas. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Uh, by the time we release the website, this thing will have a price on it. So let's go ahead and use uh, Coca-Cola, zero dollars and zero cents. And let's go ahead and go to checkout. Uh, when we get there, it's going to say amount tendered. And this amount, what we do is we can highlight that and just put, let's say, $5. Okay. And then we're going to process the payment. It's going to tell us what the change to do is back. In this case, the change is $5 because in reality, that we didn't charge anything for the soda. So there was no change to give back, but to give back the full amount, okay? Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and move on. This gives us an opportunity to go ahead and print this as or well, save it as a PDF. And I would suggest doing that. I suggest doing that with every single transaction. Why? Because at the end of the day, you can do the math about how much items you sold and how much it was, right? And you can go ahead and have a record of, of that uh, physical activity on your computer. So how you would do that? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you, even though I don't know if you're going to implement that. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit save. For so when we hit save, it gives, it, it gives you the section of your computer where you have your folders and files and things like that what i would do would be is create a folder that is familiar to me uh, you know, we can name it scheme scheme uh put a user naming scheme like for example uh daily receipts and we can also have one that's weekly receipts we could have one this uh monthly receipts quarterly receipts and then you can move them around by moving the whole entire file system into a subfolder or a root directory folder which only means that the folder is like a main folder but you can also have folders within folders and folders within folders and things like that so meaning that um, you can name scheme and however you think or prefer to use it or however you're familiar to using your computers your tablets and your phone devices so it is up to you for the purpose of this video I'm gonna go ahead and cancel because uh, basically from this point on you just gotta create your folder and choose that folder every time to save those files when they get getting processed and that takes less than what maybe three seconds because remember we have a customer in front of us so let's go ahead and press cancel on this let's go ahead and cancel on this so once we are here we also get the option to go ahead and email the receipt to the customer now we want to get into the habit of collecting the customers email address we want to get into that habit because we want to have continued contact with that customer after the initial uh, uh, transaction after that first you know meeting encounter so we want to be able to send this customer an email and say hey we got a black friday coming up tomorrow we're going to have 20 percent discount on all liquor bottles across our store and things like that so that's how valuable this information is so when the when when it comes up you don't go up would you like me to email your your receipt you just go hi how you doing uh can i get your email address so i can go ahead and email your receipt instead of asking can i email it because most customers when you say can i email the the first thing they think about is oh man this guy's gonna ask me for a whole bunch of information now i gotta wait here i just want to leave so no you just go uh, let me have your email address so i can go ahead and email your receipt that's it if the customer at that point says no then you tried but if you give the customer the choice of they selecting if they want or not want the email 95 percent of the time they're going to tell you no 
They're just going to flat out tell you no. I mean, you can go ahead and do the extra mile and then at this point uh, build a rapport with the customer and tell the customer, hey, the reason why we asked you for your email is because we're going to send you coupons and you can save money in the future. And you can go into all that to convince the customer to give you the email. Or you can do it like I just said and avoid an extra, what, two minutes of talk time on every transaction. Well, that was just a little bit of education for the business world. And let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. So let's go ahead and cancel. Click the X. And now you're faced with one single choice. That single choice is new order. When we do new order, we are preparing our POS system uh, for the next transaction. So let's go ahead and remove Coca-Cola so we can get the entire uh, POS uh, inventory back online. And this is how you place an order. Let's go ahead and the purpose of what you're doing, why you want to collect email addresses and so on and so on and so on. So let's go into menu. In menu, we see that we have products. Now, when we go to products, we have the ability to manage the stock. We have the ability of the taxable, you know, the regular price, right, which is to, uh, taxable. If you click there, that means that this becomes taxable. The next time this thing gets charged, it will charge tax on the, on the you know, subtotal. So here we have a sale price. So let's say that we activate sale price. We can actually put an amount to offset the 3375 and say that we're going to do 3275 because it's a 100 bucks saving today because for whatever reason we're running a promotion. So this is where we put that information at. So we we activate it by clicking this little this little check mark here to activate it so that this opens up so that we are able to then go ahead and edit. Okay, so hopefully you understood that. Let's go ahead and remove this. Now let's leave it there because I believe I made it more taxable. Manage stock. That means you want to you want to manage your stock. Now, um, I spoke with one of the administrative staff, and I asked them for the inventory list of the items that were on hand, but I was given like just put an X amount of number for everything. Well, that doesn't work good for us. Uh, and the reason for that is when you want to have inventory stock, you want to have the items that you actually have on hand. You don't want to make up a number. Remember, you're going to be selling these stuff online and as well in your store. And if there's a variable, meaning that there's, the amounts are different, you told me to go ahead and put 24, but in reality you only have 10 bottles of vodka, now you got 14 extra bottles of vodka that you don't have on hand. Now you're misleading that customer. That customer is going to have a bad experience because they're going to order the vodka online. They're going to go to the store to go pick it up. They're going to waste fuel, time, and effort to get to your place just to find out that there is no stock on that particular item. Does that make sense, people? Hopefully it does. So we want to have the accurate amount. The accurate amount, not an amount that we think we have, not an amount that we should have, an accurate on hand count of every single item for that particular item. Hopefully I made that clear. Let's go ahead and remove this check mark, but that's how simple it is. You go there, put the check mark in, put the amount. Simple. I use my keyboards. I don't use the digital thing here. I just use the keyboard. I just use my number keyboard. And let's say I wanted to put 10. I would put 10. Well, in this case, I was already pressed in here. But let's go ahead and go back in here. 10 and just return. All right, let's, go, whoop, let's go 10. I could do 11. If you can see that. And the way I did that is because I took and clicked on the left mouse button and I held it down and I went across the number which I highlighted in which gave me the ability to go ahead and edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back to one. I'm going to go ahead and remove that check mark from manage stock because I don't want that to happen at this moment in time. So this is how you add inventory and now you have inventory control. Okay. Now, inventory control is only as accurate as the data that's being placed on the database. 
if your database is inaccurate, your money, your closings, your monthly reports, your weekly reports, if you want weekly, whatever it is that you want to achieve will be wrong. Hopefully, I know I sound like a father repeating the same thing over and over. I'm just trying to uh, make everyone understand that having an accurate on hand count is a must now that you will be using an inventory control database system which I created for you guys all right so let's go ahead and go back to menu if we go to orders orders is gonna give us these are all test runs that I've been doing just playing around with the system making sure the system works okay as you can see I prefer to get the coca-cola bottle with no with zero dollars and zero cents um, I'm going to post this video because I got a cough and I'll be right back. I am back and I decided because this has already been a 16 minute long video that I will stop here and come back here for part three so the videos are not too long. Thank you. I'll be right back.